Good evening, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Baseball Talk for Tuesday, July 27th. Uh, I didn't have any intention of doing a video today. I was actually going to skip it, but there, I have plenty of material, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll do a, a few minutes. First, um, let's, talk about, let's talk about me. <laughs> uh, I've been training a new employee at work, someone to help me, so it's uh, it's been a learning experience for me because I've always wanted to be in a leadership position. I've always thought that I would be good at it and I'm well suited to it. Um, and uh, I, I feel lucky that I have this opportunity. I feel proud that I have this opportunity that this company trusts me to do this. Um, and I'm trying to train him in the way that I think, you know, I, I'm trying to, trying to understand him the way that he's going to learn best, but I'm also trying to you know, teach in the way that I know how to do things and kind of also incorporating some of the techniques that I was trained with here. Uh, you know, he seems to be doing okay. He, he reminds me of me a little bit in the fact that he's, he's a hard worker. He shows up, he's ready to work. You know, there's no like, you know, there's no just uh, meandering around and waiting for someone to give him direction. He's proactive. He finds stuff to do. Hard worker, wants to learn. Those are all things that, that I'm familiar with in myself, so I can relate to him. The only problem problem I'm having is, is uh, communication sometimes because English is not his first language. He's a Kenyan. Uh, he's a native Kenyan. He came over here when he was seven years old, so um, he's, you know, it's not his first language. But he, he does a good job of speaking. Clearly, I can understand what he's saying 95% of the time, 90% of the time. I, I just, um, sometimes I wonder if he's understanding me as well as I would hope he is, but he's catching on and um, we just gotta work on him getting faster, but really I want him to get the, you know, the proper way down, learn at where everything is and get that down and we'll work on the speed later. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the movie Pig. Uh, it's starring Nicolas Cage, it's about uh, a truffle hunter who gets his pig kidnapped <laughs> and he chases the, the he searches for his pig in the big city which is the big city in this movie happens to be portland oregon right here and uh i, I just it's just such a dumb it's such a dumb story like it's just really like <laughs> i can't believe they made a movie about this this but honestly it was a really good movie. They did a really good job. Really well done. Really great cinematography. Like if you're a, a, a nerd who appreciates the art and the, the the craft of filmmaking, they did a very good job. Uh, I could I could potentially see it getting some Oscar nominations for its you know best director cinematography and stuff. And it had some wonderful sights of of Portland and Pacific Northwest, which is which you know I'm a little biased towards. So I give. I, I, I really liked it. I just, I don't understand. It was, it was honestly a dumb story, but it was a good movie. They, they told it well, and uh, I recommend you all watch it. It's probably so far from the movies I've seen, uh, it's in, in my top two from the year already, honestly. So, uh, the, you know, the, maybe the bar is low, or, or maybe, uh, maybe it's a better movie than. That I'm willing to admit, but um, yeah. So getting into the a little bit of baseball now, aside from the personal stuff, you know, um, I'm leaving for my trip 5:30 in the morning, so it's going to be exciting. I'm hoping that for a jam-packed couple of days, kind of got the itinerary figured out already, as I said in my video yesterday. But Noah Syndergaard, um, we just got. A, a, a new update on Noah Syndergaard yesterday and it's unlikely that he's going to return to the starting rotation for the Mets this year which immensely decreases his fancy value for those of us who've been holding him all year hoping for you know uh, him to help us come playoff time it's not looking like that's going to happen if he does return to pitch this year late in the season it's going to be out of the bullpen uh, it's not going to be in a high leverage situation so he's he's not someone that we should hold. If you are needing the injured list spot like I am, uh, it's very safe to move on from Noah Syndergaard uh, and take your chances in next year's draft. Um, real quickly, 
Uh, even though it's not fantasy baseball related, I want to talk about Jerry Depoto, the Mariners GM again, because uh, those of you who know me know that I think he's a, 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 <laughs> quite the idiot. And I think that his idiotic uh, decisions are kind of <laughs> not only just pissing me off anymore, they're starting to piss off the players. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been following this uh, the Mariners at all. Probably not, but those of you who follow baseball know that Kendall Graveman just got traded from the Mariners. Um, you know, the trade in a vacuum makes sense. He's an older guy. He's never had this kind of success before. He's on a one-year contract. Uh, Mariners can get something for him now. I'm fine with it. I, I don't hate the trade in a vacuum. I knew they, I figured they were going to trade him. The problem is they traded him to the Astros, which are the team that are leading us in the division right now. Uh, and for the Mariners, all, another thing about the Mariners is we're actually in the midst of a decent season so far. We have a chance for the playoffs. We have a chance for a wild card for the first time in 20 years. Fans are really excited about this team. We're really excited about Kendall Graveman emerging as a closer. <laughs> and having gets not only gets traded, he gets traded to the team in our division and the team that's leading us and the team that we're playing right now. So it's quite a mess. And the players just were not having it. The players were just pissed off about this. You should read some of the comments that these guys are saying about Jerry DePoto. They are giving him up. They are putting him through the ringer, and I love it. I love it, because I can't stand the guy. He's such an idiot. <laughs> and and uh, I'm glad these players are uh, speaking out and um, firing back at him. And uh, I <laughs> can't wait to see how this drama plays out. I, I really think... We're, be, uh, Mariners being the Mariners, so there, it's about to be a massive tailspin. These guys are about to go completely down the drain. And, uh, <laughs> suck again. And Jerry Depoto, hopefully, will get fired in the offseason because we are, <laughs> fans are done with him, and the players that he, the players that he, uh, has on his roster are done with it. You should read the article in the Seattle Times. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, but man, they, players are blasting to photo. <laughs> it, I was, it's one of the best newspaper articles I've read in a long time. And uh, I'm, I wish I, I, I remembered who wrote it. But all you have to do is search Seattle Times, um, Kendall Graveman, Jerry DePoto. It'll, it'll probably be the first thing you see and they're just you, you should read it because the players do not have kind things to say about Jerry DePoto um, and the, the decisions that he's making right now um, my my assumption is that the we got back a young guy Abraham Toro who is you know a backup infielder that can play third base uh, and giving him what DePoto has said about the trade, it's, he's try, doing what he does best, trying to spin it into positives. Uh, I would suspect that he plans on trading Kyle Seeger and getting some uh, value back for him that uh, maybe for the bullpen, maybe at another infield spot. I, I don't know. I it, He's, like I said, he's an idiot. So who knows what he's going to do. Um, but that's my suspicion given the things that he is saying um but anyways i'm still gonna i'm skipping the steam and hot uh segment again we're just going to streaming pitchers it's a full day of games tomorrow so you should have plenty of pitching options four best streaming options in no particular order here i know i was trying to do it chronological based on the start of the game time but um kind of falling out of that kind of lazy and just I'm not really bored with fantasy baseball. There just isn't. I, I just feel like there's not enough material, really, for me to do it daily videos of baseball. But I'm really excited for the NBA draft. Uh, I'm very invested in that. Uh, maybe when we're past that, I might commit into baseball again. But then we'll be getting into fantasy football season. So um, these are just the dog days of summer, as they call it in baseball. So. Uh, there's not enough going on in baseball. There's a lot of stuff going on in other fancy um, aspects. So that's, that's stuff that I'm kind of mentally focused on, but I'm doing my best in baseball here. 
streaming pitchers for tomorrow for Andrew Haney of the Angels against the Rockies. Andrew Haney is at home. Andrew Haney is uh, pretty good most of the time. Sometimes he's really bad, but he's pretty good most of the time. Rockies are really bad most of the time. A lot of that would just suggest that Andrew Haney should have a good start. He also is right on the cusp of the streaming tier because he's at 50 only 50.1 percent that's very very uh right in the middle uh, i gave him you know i put him in the streaming tier for for today but if he has a good start he won't be in the streaming tier for his next start um Ty tyler miguel for, of the mets against the braves tyler miguel's putting up some good stats despite not really getting the wins um the braves are a bit of a struggle right now trying to adjust without the to not having Ronald Lacuna. Um, so Tyler Miguel should be able to capitalize on that tomorrow. Eric Lauer of the Brewers at the Pirates. Eric Lauer surprisingly has been pitching really well since entering the rotation. Um, he's made six starts. So about a month ago, less than a month ago, a little bit. Um, and the Pirates are, are, are a team that we shouldn't worry about um, against Lauer. So Lauer should make it seven straight good starts and lastly jake odorizzi of the astros against the mariners uh, i know the mariners are pissed off at jerry DePoto, but i think uh they're i think they're gonna um their little i think their temper is going to uh influence them in a negative way they're not they're gonna struggle uh tomorrow and probably for the rest of the season um so jake odorizzi should be able to capitalize on that as the astros uh, continue to pull away from the rest of the division and with the, the Astros now even better bullpen because of what they got from us um, Jake Odorizzi should should be able to qualify for a win very easily I don't know the Mariners also thinks they could come out really inspired and just clobber Odorizzi tomorrow but um, baseball is a little bit different than a, than a sport like football where football, you, you know, you can play with your instincts, you can play emotional, and it, it'll help your game. Or basketball, where if you come out motivated, you, more you'll be more aggressive. That can help your game too. Baseball, not so much like that. Uh, hitting a baseball is hard. Uh, there's no emotional advantage to it when you're angry or whatever. Um, you might swing harder, you might be more aggressive, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to succeed more. So it's a crapshoot. It can go either way. But my guess being a Mariners fan for as long as I have been. Uh, things are going to go south for Seattle. So get Jake Odorizzi and capitalize on the chaos that is brewing up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, with Seattle and Jerry Dipshit Odo, as I like to call him. So I can't believe this went 13 minutes. Um, like I said, I had plenty of material to talk about today. Tomorrow I will film somewhere in Colorado Springs for you as I do my NBA mock draft. Uh, for those who are interested, I'll probably break it up into... Man, I don't even know if I'm going to do all 60 picks. That's probably hard. I might just do the first round. Um, and I'll break it up into probably three segments. Picks 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30. Probably is going to be my guess. Um, where I'm going to film, I don't really know yet. Uh, I have some ideas. I have some ideas, though. We'll see. We'll see you guys. We'll just have to tune in. And, uh, yeah. we we'll just have to tune in and see. Surprises. I like surprises, so I like to give people surprises. But have a blessed day. Uh, peace, love, and nacho fries.